Mahasi Seda was a Burmese Theravada Buddhist monk and meditation master who had a significant impact on the teaching of Vipassana or insight meditation in the West and throughout Asia. In his style of practice, the meditator lives according to Buddhist morality as a prerequisite for meditation practice. Meditation itself mandates the practice of bare insight using Satipatthana, the four foundations of mindfulness, so as to anchor the attention on the sensations of the rising and falling of the abdomen during breathing. One has to observe carefully on thoughts and any other sensations or expressions. This is coupled to reflection on the Buddhist teachings on causality, thereby gaining insight into anicca, dukkha and anatta and thus attaining stream entry or a state from where there is no reversal, a state entering which liberation is assured. For any form of meditation, it is important to develop an attitude to release worldly thoughts from the mind-intellect constitution. This requires the intention to be in place at the very beginning. The course designed by Mahasi Seda is strictly designed for the purification of conduct which is the primary step towards the step of contemplation. Prior to any Buddhist meditation practice, it is just mandatory that the eight precepts of Buddhist life has to be followed. They are abstaining from killing, abstaining from stealing, abstaining from illicit sexual activity, abstaining from telling lies, abstaining from intoxicating drinks and drugs, abstaining from eating after noon, abstaining from entertainment and beautifying the body, abstaining from using luxurious furniture. One should also avoid speaking with contempt or in any such mood which is hurtful. These rules have to be at least followed during the days of training. This is the minimum condition. One should be careful and watchful enough and not forget to ask for humble forgiveness from people whom one may have hurt in some way. This sensitivity one should develop as one trains oneself. One has to submit oneself to the masters of the Buddhist tradition because it may well be possible that during the course of meditation, one's mind may throw up frightening visions that can put one off balance. The aim of the meditation and precepts is to release oneself from the grip of greed, hatred and delusion. These form the very roots of evil and suffering. One is also to bring to mind the four protections that the Buddha offers to us for reflection. They are the Buddha himself, loving kindness, the loathsome aspects of the body like decay and disease and the fourth aspect is death. This short meditation course is based on the foundations of mindfulness which the Buddhas committed themselves following which they attained release. Now we shall follow the steps of the insight meditation. First, we should devote ourselves to Buddha glorifying his nine chief qualities in the following way. The Buddha is all holy, fully enlightened with perfect knowledge and conduct. He stays for the welfare of all, he knows all and he is the incomparable leader of men. He is even the teacher of the gods. He is the awakened one as well as the exalted one. One has to reflect and bring to consciousness all the sentient beings through pure emotions. One has to place oneself with all these sentient beings without separating oneself from them. One has to bring these following statements to mind. May I be free from enmity, disease and grief. As I am, so also may my parents, preceptors, teachers, intimate and indifferent and inimical beings be free from enmity, disease and grief. May they be released from suffering. Then one has to remember the repulsive nature of the body so that one loses interest in the physical body. One has to dwell on some of the most horrible impurities of the body by casting a mental picture of the inner conditions of the stomach, intestines, phlegm, pus, blood, wounds, etc. One has to ponder on these impurities 
so that the absurd fondness for the body is slowly eliminated. Next, one has to bring to consciousness the cold hands of death approaching. This is for the meditator's psychological benefit. Buddhist teachings stress that life is uncertain but death is certain. Life is precarious but death is sure. Life has death as its goal. There is birth, disease, suffering, old age and eventually death. These are all aspects of the process of existence. Now we go further with the basic exercise. One has to be in the sitting posture in a cross-legged condition on a mat on the floor. One might feel more comfortable if the legs are not interlocked but evenly placed on the ground without pressing one against the other. If one finds that sitting on the floor interferes with contemplation, then one must obtain a more comfortable way of sitting. Now, one must proceed with each exercise in contemplation as described. One should focus one's mind on the abdomen, but not necessarily look at one's abdomen. One should then focus on the movements of rising and falling of the abdomen. If these movements are not clear in the beginning, then one should place both hands on the abdomen to feel these rising and falling movements. After a short time, the upward movement of exhalation will become clear. Then one should make a mental note of rising for the upward movement, falling for the downward movement. One's mental notes must be made with each movement while it occurs. From this exercise, one learns the actual manner of the upward and downward movements of the abdomen. One really perceives the bodily sensation of pressure caused by the heaving movement of the abdomen. So one should not dwell on the form of the abdomen but proceed with the exercise. For the beginner, it is a very effective method of developing the faculties of attention concentration of mind and insight in contemplation. As practice progresses, the manner of the movements will become clearer. The ability to know each successive occurrence of the mental and physical processes at each of the six sense organs is acquired only when insight contemplation is fully developed. Since one is a beginner whose attentiveness and power of concentration are still weak, one may find it difficult to keep the mind on each successive rising movement and falling movement as it occurs. So one may be inclined to think, I just don't know how to keep my mind on each of these movements. Then one should simply remember that this is a learning process. The rising and falling movements of the abdomen are always present and therefore there is no need to look for them. Actually, it is easy for a beginner to keep his or her mind on these two simple movements. One should continue with this exercise in full awareness of the abdomen's rising and falling movements. One should never verbally repeat the words rising, falling and do not think of rising and falling as words. One should only be aware of the actual process of the rising and falling movements of the abdomen. One should avoid deep or rapid breathing for the purpose of making the abdominal movements more distinct because this procedure causes fatigue that interferes with the practice. One should just be totally aware of the movements of rising and falling as they occur in the course of normal breathing. By training like this for a period of 36 days, attention shall become sharp making one ready to go to the stage of the Mahasi Seda Advanced Insight Meditation Technique.